Assalamu students. Welcome to the course of entrepreneurship, uh, course called MGT403. I'll be uh, the teacher for this course and today we are going to briefly have a good look on what we expect to cover during this semester in this course. Uh, before we get there, uh, let's look at the objectives of today's talk. First of all, uh, you'll get the introduction of the instructor then we'll explore the course goals that I have in mind for you. What are the learning outcomes that we can expect from this course? What are the objectives of this, of this course? And then we'll have a preview of the content of this course. First of all, my name is uh, Malik Jawad Sabur. I did my BB honors at MBA from International Islamic University Islamabad. Later I went to UK and I did my MSc in Business and Management from University of Strathclyde, Scotland. And currently I'm pursuing my PhD in Management Sciences from Accra University, Islamabad. Coming to experience, uh, after my MBA, I served at Ariaz Rice Mills, which is now uh, known as Aromabas Rice Mills Private Limited. I worked there as manager of marketing and later as manager finance. Then I went to UK for my uh, postgrad studies. When I returned I served at Punjab University for a semester as adjunct faculty where I'm, I was conducting courses of uh, entrepreneurship and organizational behavior. I also taught at Gift University Gujranwala. Then I was inducted at Comsex Institute of Information Technology, which is now known as Comsex University Islamabad. And I was inducted as lecturer and I'm currently serving here as assistant professor. One bet that I missed is the NAB. This is not the National Accountability Bureau. Rather, it is the National Australia Banking Group that operates in the United Kingdom. And it is basically a parent body of Clydesdale Bank and Yorkshire Bank and I've served there as financial services administrator for a year. The course goal uh, that I have in mind are, first of all, we should be able to identify entrepreneurship as a career and life style option. When we get inducted or get admitted in particular degrees, we do so with certain objectives and expectation that after graduating we will be, let's say in case your case, uh, specialist in biology. And usually you would relate particular careers with that field. For instance, you could be researchers, you could be teachers, you could be um, handling various laboratories, uh, standard setting organizations, quality standard organizations, but we need to look entrepreneurship as an alternate career choice. And I hope that when, when we go through this discussion and during this course, you will identify entrepreneurship as a career. And we would also like to build upon the business skills such as marketing, finance, and strategy, which is also the key component of any business organization. So by connecting various dots related to various functions, we will be able to come up with a holistic picture of how is it like to run a business. We would also like to increase self-awareness and especially work ethics. Each one of us is composed of strengths and weaknesses. Everyone carries some strong points and everyone possesses some weaknesses as well. But we will try is to map our abilities better and how to capitalize them in a better way is yet another goal that I guess that we'll be able to somehow touch upon. We will also become acquainted with business leaders and we will do that by having their examples quoted, uh, their contributions quoted, 
and understanding how they have worked. And I will also like to complement the course with the documentaries that are available related to these business leaders. We would also like to develop a mindset for business and develop confidence. So once you are through this course, you will be uh, very well aware of the journal business jargons that are used in management sciences and in business talks. So once have you have the grasp of those concepts, you will not be sitting there as aliens in any discussion that relates to the business. And you will be, I hope, confident enough to be making some solid, good contributions in those discussions. And we will also like to gain a life role credit after successful completion of this course. So what are the learning outcomes that we can expect from this course? First of all, utilization of students' personal attributes to contribute to an entrepreneurial venture, application and demonstration of problem-solving problem strategies and attitudes necessary to develop entrepreneurial ideas. And that I consider as the hallmark of this course which would differentiate from it from other journal management and organizational behavior courses. Thirdly, understanding the role of capital resource management. How we utilize, map, find the finances and the capital. Development of guerrilla marketing techniques for business promotion self-evaluation of venture plan and reflection on ways to improve the plans. Recognition of social and economic benefits of entrepreneurship within the context of community service. That yes, entrepreneurs start their business and usually uh, the attributes such as uh, greed are usually related to entrepreneurs, but that is not a true reflection of this whole phenomenon. There are certain contributions that come from the entrepreneurs and we'll have a good look and discussion on them. We also like to focus upon understanding the importance of time management, communication and human resources. So let's have a, a brief overview of what we expect to cover during this course. In lecture number two, we will thoroughly try to understand the term of entrepreneurs. We'll try to dissect the attributes that are associated with the definitions of entrepreneurship and try to understand with them with the help of solid examples. And we would also like to come up with a set of certain attributes that can be combined to identify individuals as entrepreneurs. In lecture number three, we will look at the various benefits that could be expected if one gets engaged in the process of entrepreneurship. Alongside, we would also like to have a solid look on the possible drawbacks that may affect an entrepreneur. It's not, it's not at all an altogether rosy story. Yes, there are benefits and there could be some drawbacks with this process and phenomenon as well. We would also like to understand the forces that are contributing towards the popularity of the concept and process of entrepreneurship. In lecture four, we're going to cover a very interesting topic whereby we'll be exploring the various segments of the society that are being represented in entrepreneurship. When you look around, at the various entrepreneurs in your community, you may find individuals with different profiles. So we would like to have a good look on various groups 
that are coming in entrepreneurship realm. Lecture 5, we are expecting uh, an international motivational talker, speaker. His name is Dr. Anil Salman and I hope that he will be able to and rather he will give us and enlighten us about the concept of entrepreneurship, its importance with relevance to your science subjects. In lecture 6, uh, we expect to revert back to our academic discussions and the next topic that we will cover would be the putting failure in proper perspectives and avoiding the pitfalls of small business failure. Talking about failure, putting failure in proper perspective, we will like to understand the possible reasons for which generally entrepreneurs tend to fail and what could be done to avoid those failures. Lecture 7 will start a new dimension of this course whereby in this dimension we will be trying to connect creativity, innovation and entrepreneurship. First of all, we'll start by understanding the difference between creativity and innovation. These are the terms that are usually used interchangeably, but technically they are altogether different. However, they are related. Then we'll try to understand a very important concept of paradigm. It's a philosophical concept, but we will try to translate it into the context of entrepreneurship and understand that how does it adversely or it may adversely affect the potential of the creativity potential of individuals and particularly entrepreneurs. Then we will like to have a good look on the various barriers that are affecting the creativity and we'll try to relate these concepts with the real life examples. And last but not the least, in this lecture, we'll try to explore that what are the various techniques that could be utilized to spur imagination in creative context. Lecture 8 would be encompassing on various tactics that could be utilized to enhance organizational creativity. So if tomorrow, after your graduation, you become an entrepreneur and you want your organization to be known for creativity and innovation, known for innovative products, how could you ensure that your organization is focusing on becoming creative? And how you can expect and encourage your employees to keep coming up with new ideas with potential of being translated, transformed into real life products. Lecture number nine will continue the discussion and our focus will be instead of organizational creativity on, we will be rather focusing on how to enhance individuals creativity. So as a person, what could be done to improve our creative potential and creative output. We will continue by exploring various techniques that could be utilized to enhance creativity. The first one would be brainstorming, then we'll have a good look on mind mapping, what rapid prototyping is, mix and match exercise, and last but not the least, attribute listing chart. Lecture number 10 would encompass two dimensions of innovation. First of all, we'll try to distinguish among various forms of innovation. Usually innovation is used as a sweeping word. Yes, one needs to be innovative. 
but we will try to crystallize that concept and try to understand in, it into in a better detail that what various options are available if we want to focus on innovation. So firstly, we'll try to understand the forms of innovation and then we'll try to differentiate between various types of innovation and it's going to be a very interesting lecture. Once we understand the concept of creativity and innovation, then we will be focusing upon how to protect our ideas and our products or services. For that, we will be focusing upon the intellectual property rights. And in this lecture, we will understand the concepts of patents, what are the steps that are to be taken for securing patents, what are the benefits obtain of ob obtaining patents, and the relevant concepts and related concepts are of trademarks and copyrights. In lecture 12, uh, as I had already discussed in course of objective, we will watch a documentary uh, uh, highlighting the life of Bill Gates so far and I'm sure there will be lots and lots of lessons to be drawn from this documentary. From lecture 13, we'll start looking at altogether a new dimension in entrepreneurship. And it would detail the strategic management and its relevance to entrepreneurship. So in lecture 13, we'll try to explore the definition of strategic management, the steps that are involved in it. We'll explore very important concept of competitive advantage, core competencies, and then we'll look at the process that is to be done or conducted for strategic management of any enterprise. And it would start with the exploration of what vision and mission statements are. And we'll also try to connect strategic, uh, sorry, vision and mission statement with the concepts of competitive advantage and core competency. And this lecture would conclude by introduction of SWOT analysis, that is basically strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of an enterprise. And I expect to cover at least half of this analysis in lecture 30. The remainder part of SWOT analysis would be continued in lecture 14. And in lecture 14, we'll also look at an, another important element of strategic management, that being the pastel analysis. In this analysis, we'll try to understand various forces, external environmental forces that influence or may influence an organization. And in pastel analysis, we are expecting to look at the political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental forces in context of business. We'll continue with the strategic management process by analyzing competitors, understanding how company goals and objectives are made and what is, what is their significance, how various strategies are formulated, we also look at various types of strategy options that are available, how the strategies are translated into action plans, and last but not the least, how controls are established in order to ensure that whatever strategic management initiatives have been taken, they are working effectively. When right controls are established, it, they are basically the indicators or the checkpoints whereby you can map out if your strategic planning is going well or not. So you can take corrective measures if necessary. All of this is going to be covered in lecture 15. In lecture 16, we are going to uh, cover two topics. First one is the TOES matrix. 
Now this is kind of extension of SWOT matrix that we had earlier, uh, that we would be earlier uh, discussing earlier, that being the uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. But in case of TOES matrix, we'll try, uh, we'll, we'll try to draw that what could be made out of that original SWOT analysis. So we will be basically exploring the various combinations of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats being mapped against each other to come up with strategic and tactical options. The second topic that we are going to cover in lecture number 16 would be the feasibility analysis in which we are going to explore and understand the Porter Five Forces model which is a very important study when it comes to the feasibility analysis. Then we will also look at upon the product or feasibility or service feasibility analysis and financial feasibility analysis. So basically there are going to be three kinds of analysis that are going to be relevant in uh, feasibility analysis. First one is industry market analysis. Second one would be the feasibility of product and the third one would be the financial feasibility whether this venture or the product is financially viable or not. In lecture number 17 we are going to explore the advantages and disadvantages of the various forms of ownership options that are available with the entrepreneurs. But this is a very important topic whereby you'll understand the legal consequences of your choice of the ownership. So we are going to explore the sole proprietorship, the partnership and the corporation options in thorough details. We will explore their advantages, each one of them and the disadvantages associated with each one of them. And we will also uh, study the corporation in much finer details by exploring the options of private limited firms and public limited firms. In lecture 18, we will look upon a very important concept that you are uh, witnessing around yourself uh, every day and that is franchising. We will understand the basic concept, the construct of the franchising by and also under, try understanding the benefits and the drawbacks of buying a franchise. We will try to explore the right way to buy a franchise and online the major trends that are shaping franchising. In lecture number 19, we will continue with the topic of franchising by understanding various myths related to franchising and the tips that could help you make a better decision if tomorrow you have to negotiate a, for a franchising deal. The second topic that would be covered in lecture num number 19 is related to the financials. We will try to understand the importance of preparing a financial plan. We will also try to understand the usual mistakes that are made while developing financial statements and we will also explore the basic financial statements as well alongside the break-even chart. Lecture 20 will be in com uh, covering a comprehensive talk on the differences of various type of capital that is required and utilized by small enterprises including fixed working and growth capital. We will also try to describe the difference between equity capital and debt capital. Various sources of equity capital including personal savings, friends and relatives, angels, partners, corporations, venture capital and public stock offerings advantages and disadvantages of these options would be explored and we would also like to explore the various sources of debt and the advantages and disadvantages associated with each. 
From lecture 21, our focus will be on the marketing side of entrepreneurship. We'll start by exploring rather understanding various definitions of marketing and then we'll go upon to understand the concept of four P's of marketing that would be product price, uh, price placement and promotion and their importance and significance for entrepreneurship. This would be followed by understanding the marketing wheel of fortune that would try to encapsulate the whole marketing uh, process in one diagram. Then we'll also try to understand that how the marketing effort of a small enterprise is different from the large, larger corporations. And what are the advantages or generic advantages that are enjoyed by small enterprises as compared to their larger counterparts and how they can capitalize upon those generic advantages. In lecture number 22, we will continue the previous topic by understanding uh, the difference between marketing efforts for small businesses and corporation and small business marketing advantage and that our next focus will be to understand the one-on-one -on -one marketing and then followed by the concept of customer sensitivity and we'll try to explore various types of sensitivity level that enterprise tend to operate upon. This will be followed on an important talk on guerrilla marketing and we will explore what it is and how it is conducted. And this chapter would conclude by discussion on the competitive advantage development through focusing on customer and quality. In lecture 23, we'll continue the discussion of development of competitive advantage, but in ca this case, we'll be focusing upon the development of competitive advantage through convenience by focusing on innovation, service, and speed. A second topic that would be explored in lecture number 23 would be the option of buying an existing business instead of starting anything from scratch. So we'll try to explore the advantages and disadvantages that are related to uh, buying an existing business. We'll try to understand the steps that are involved to buy a right business and critical areas for analyzing an existing business. Lecture number 24 is going to be an interesting documentary related to Steve Jobs, the founder of uh, Apple Incorporation. Followed by lecture number 25, in which we'll explore the concept of corporate entrepreneurship, also considered or called entrepreneurs, whereby we'll try to explore various types of corporate entrepreneurship, how entrepreneurs, not entrepreneurs, are compensated, what are the general barriers that, are, that tend to hinder the process of entrepreneurship, what are the freedom factors attached to entrepreneurship? What are the advantages and disadvantages of entrepreneurship? How the firms can support the process of entrepreneurship? And what are the 10 commandments of entrepreneurship? Lecture number 26 would be focusing upon stakeholders management, whereby We'll try to understand the various stakeholders that are involved with any enterprise. We'll try to understand their relation. We'll try to understand the nature of their interests that they may carry. And then we'll also try to map them on a grid against each other to have a holistic picture of all those stakeholders. By, and we'll conclude this lecture by understanding the various strategic options that are available to cater each segment of those stakeholders. Lecture number 27 will encompass two topics. 
Firstly, we'll look at the topic of influencing and bargaining. Now, influencing and bargaining are the concept that every individual is engaged in, and particularly entrepreneurs have to be influencing and bargaining on daily basis. So we'll try to get into the details of, or theoretical details of these concepts. The second topic that is going to be covered is identification of key attributes of social entrepreneurs. We'll also try to understand the characteristics of social enterprise and understand how social enterprise differ from other types of organizations. Lecture 28 is going to be a very interesting lecture in which we are going to explore the concept of elevator pitch, what elevator pitch is, what it should have and what it should not be having. What are the various elements of elevator pitch and this would be followed by real life elevator pitches that have been done on a program called Dragon's Den and you will see various entrepreneurs doing pitches of their business ideas in front of real life successful businessmen whereby they will be defending their ideas in front of these uh, ruthless entrepreneurs. In this course, uh, some practical assignments will be given to the students. So I'm expecting that by lecture 29, they will be having some prototype products of any particular industry ready for demonstration. So I hope that they will be able to come and present their work in lecture number 29. In lecture number 30, uh, we are going to cover a very important topic that is the development of business plan. We'll try to explore the various elements of a business plan, what lenders and investors look for in a business plan, how to make the business plan presentation, and we'll also under try to understand the business plan format. Lecture number 31 is going to be a real life demonstration of an entrepreneur's life. Or, or, or a day or a week of an entrepreneur's life. So we're going to watch an episode of a program called Undercover Boss, whereby you'll see entrepreneurs trying to cater the problems that their employees face on the daily basis. So I'm sure that there's going to be lots and lots of learning in this lecture. And our concluding lecture would be the lecture number 32, in which we will be summing up and reviewing all of all the contents of this course. I'm very excited to be with you guys and I'm hoping for a great time ahead with you with the expectation that instead of treating this course merely for uh, you know passing and getting good grades, I hope that you really get to learn something and add few more skills into your bag after participating in this course. I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much.